Lisa. You're in the loop. We're here to discuss the ups, downs, and sideways of the sport of figure skating and maybe give you plus five GOE along the way. Let's introduce this week's hosts. Hi, I'm Bex, and I'm spending the week indulging in holiday debauchery to figure out all my skating feelings. You can find me on Twitter at Bexfa. Hi, I'm Evie, and I'm celebrating Christmas the only way I know how. Too much turkey, champagne, and of course, national skating championships. You can find me on Twitter at Double Flutz. So, Bex, it's that time of year again. We're in the nationals part of the season. It's Christmas. It's nationals time. Oh, and for once... Japanese and Russian nationals aren't conflicting, like they're not on the same week, which is very nice for my sleep schedule. It, it actually is like the one blessing, although I think the problem is since I don't have to juggle them both at the same time, now I'm like, Japanese nationals burnt me out so much that like, maybe I can't even handle Russian nationals at this point. Honestly, <laughs> that's a mood. Russian nationals will just be my, my holiday period where I'm just going to sleep through the whole thing. I've had my fill of skating for the last couple of months. I can take like a week off and not watch Russian nationals. I didn't watch it last year either. I guess it's kind of a yearly thing for me where I'm just like, I wake up in the next morning, I check the results and I go, ah, yes, this event happened. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> Japanese nationals is just like, well, it's in my time time zone so i might as well watch it can't relate <laughs> to the time zone aspect and it certainly was an event this year it was quite the affair <laughs> and usually we would start off uh, an episode talking about the pairs but because there is literally only one pair and only a handful of ice dance teams we're saving that till the end so we're going to start off the episode by talking about the hot mess that was the men's event here at Japanese Nationals. So our podium, uh, in gold, we have Shomono. In silver, we have Yuzuru Hanyu. And in bronze, we have Yuma Kagiyama. Uh, and for the assignments to the championships, because Fuji t- decided to live stream on Instagram extremely late, the championship placements for uh the Japanese like national team and so uh Shoma, Yuzu and Yuma are all going to four continents. Uh Shoma, Yuzu and KG are going to worlds and then for junior worlds it's Shun and Yuma. So woohoo we have our teams. Stress. Yes. Mm. This whole event has just been a mess, really. Yeah honestly like normally Japanese nationals is my literal favorite event of the year because like you're guaranteed a lot of heartbreak but it's like you get to see like so many good skaters and you know there's so many skaters who never get international assignments and it's great but this year honestly I was kind of like I don't know maybe I'm going to revise my stance on what my favorite competition of the year is because this was too much emotional whiplash (laughs) to bear yeah honestly You had some of the most, like, amazing skates and then, like, some of the lowest lows and you're just being thrown back and forth and it was just the worst. It was a lot, especially after how much of a mess Grand Prix Final was. But we had some really good high points, like... I think one of the things that was absolutely the nicest was seeing some of the juniors do extremely, extremely well. Yes, exactly. Seniors who, I only know juniors, they are the only valid thing in figure skating right now. Honestly, honestly, I love our second junior nationals. Like, why don't more um, countries have, like, two junior national competitions? This is clearly the way to live. (laughs) Just repeat the junior nationals. Don't worry about the seniors. They're fine. They can do whatever. They've they've got enough to do, honestly. (laughs) Exactly. The juniors have nothing between their nationals and, like, junior worlds. Give them another. Yeah. Just let them have another. But this this year really felt kind of like a bit of a changing of the guard more than... Because the Japanese men hasn't been the most exciting event the last couple years. Especially in comparison to, like, previous years when it's been just, like... A hellfire of too many men. We all remember like 2011 to 2014. Yeah. That was a time. But yeah, in recent years, it hasn't been quite as up in the air. But this year, really, we went into nationals and we're like, we don't know what's going to happen because the juniors have done amazing at the junior nationals and at junior Grand Prix final. Um, you had Shun and Yuma. And then you had so many retirements. Like I looked at a list of skaters who said this was the last nationals for the men and it was like eight blokes. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it, it's been interesting. We had a lot of farewell skates. 
Um, a lot of farewell skates, which ended with like a really tragic jump air at the end. Yeah, what what was it with the men retiring and messing up their last jumping pass? Yeah, I don't know. It was like extremely relatable as like a very very tired person this year who's just like over everything. So I'm really gonna miss some of them, like because some of them have been such staples, like Hiroki Sato is such a lovely skater and he generally brings such an interesting character so it's going to be a shame to see him move on um and it feels like Ryuju has just been here forever and then dies farewell skate the crowd was extremely extremely into them it was quite i haven't heard that much chanting in a skating competition in a very long time he certainly has uh, a lot of fans who made the trip for yes. nationals yes and w- well it's not like this is going to be the, probably the last time we see him considering he's probably get, he's going to be switching into ice dance yeah we'll see how so. that goes hopefully he can get us ice dance broadcasted if nothing else but we'll see <laughs> but yeah I was I hope he got kind of the closing that he wanted on his singles career because he seemed pretty happy at the end of his um of his free he seemed pretty just like yeah this is this is fine he seemed to have fun performing for the crowds as his short was very kind of messy, but you know. It was a mess, but it seemed like a mess that he was like having a good time throwing out. So I hope it was satisfying. Yeah, but I think like one of the most like surprising things out of this whole Nationals is just how well Shoma did overall. Oh my god. Honestly, is Stefan some sort of witch? What coven does he run? Literally like Master of the Arcane Rites. What the hell <laughs> happened in Switzerland? <laughs> You can just, you can tell how much, like, having a stable kind of training base and a coach, like, a good environment has really done well for Shoma. He's, like, not only doing well in his skating, but he's, like, seems visibly more happy than he has been in, like, the Grand Prix, like, during IDF and Ross Telecom. And so I'm just, I'm glad that he's settled down a little bit. Yeah, he looks so much more just confident and happy i think this like his short program especially because great spirit is not an easy short program Um, no i didn't actually expect that we would see it pretty clean this entire season so and this was like the best he skated since the olympics so that was just he came out and we were just like what happened (laughs) like (laughs) it was really incredible the jump in quality from the last couple competitions is just astounding Uh, it's it's really really good to see considering how hard it was to watch him during the grand prix with all the errors he had so just him having like a pretty clean competition is just like a relief like a collective sigh that okay he's fine we don't we can kind of stop worrying a bit i'm very glad he seems to be on the right track and he won like he got gold which is fourth year running which is really impressive but I don't think I've ever seen him actually like so tangibly like emotional on a podium he's mentioned that winning over Yuzu was one of his basically like main goals ever since he started seniors and that it was more important than the Olympics so in terms of confidence and in terms of what this meant to him and it, it really seemed to have an impact. So I'm glad to see that he seems on track. That said, um, <laughs> his jumps still terrify me like no one else. I don't think I can like watch anything without just wincing and like his knees, man. His knees? Like the way that he saves his jumps, especially in the free when he has the really close landings and the way he relies so heavily on his knees to like take the shock of the landing. My knees hurt like in response to that, just watching him. It's the worst. I just watch him, like, almost fall and try and put all of that pressure on his, like, extremely bendable knees. And I'm just like, ow, my legs are hurting. <laughs> yeah, it's all the sympathy pains. Yeah, and I mean, his, the tech panel was pretty lenient to him, especially in the free. They definitely gave him the benefit of the doubt in the free with a lot of the jumps. Like, personally, I would have called the flip. Uh, under rotated like it was the landing was really close but you know with most of his flips that he does the pre-rotation was pretty excessive and so yeah it was borderline but I probably would have given it to him especially considering the tech panel was pretty strict on everyone but Shoma in the free which is what annoyed me the most I think that's what made it very glad because you know I am like the ultimate like I will advocate for a strict tech panel any day all day like hire them for everything love them to death but like 
there's nothing more frustrating than an inconsistently strict tech panel. So yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of unfortunate. Um, but overall, it was great to see him have like really two great back-to-back skates and really get his confidence back and show that he's kind of moving in the right direction um, regarding his coaching change. Um, I think we forgot to properly mention, but he is going to be coached formally um, by Stefan starting in the coming year. So, um, and it seems to be working out well for him. So hopefully um, the rest that can have the season will continue to be much better than the first. Yeah, I hope that being, like Stefan's camp seems like a really positive kind of environment. So I'm really hoping that that'll treat him well in the coming months, especially because he has like, he's going to be, he's training with skaters like Koshiro. So he's got like some friends there. So yes, a happy environment is good. And of course, here at JNATS, we also had his, uh, you know, annual mid-season costume change in both programs. Never fails on that front to keep the costume designers in pocket money. I don't know. I I don't mind either of them. I think I prefer both of the original costumes to these ones. Like, the in the short, the Great Spirit, like, maroon uh, pants and top. I don't know. I think I liked the, like, bluey top and the black pants of the original a little bit more. And then with the free, with the extremely deep V-neck. I don't know, the illusion mesh. and the, It just felt, I think for the simplicity of sort of aspects of the program, I think the costume he had before suited it better. Like, I don't ha- get how this particular new costume goes with it, but I, I don't hate it. It's just kind of like, I think ever since he changed costume designers to like Mato Karan, I, I'm just a kind of solid, relatively neutral, like, at least he has proper costumes, but they don't really stun me in the way um, his costumes did when he worked with Satomi. But anyway, shall we talk about Yuzu? Yeah, let's talk about Yuzu, who is back at Nationals after, after four, four years. years. Oh my god, like, literally, I remember the first time he withdrew from Nationals, because I went to that Nationals in 2016, <laughs> and I was walking through Rapongi and I got a text, I was like, oh, Yuzu's out, and I was just like, oh. Now he's back after four, it's been like a, the length of an entire quad. But he's back now. Yeah. In arguably a little bit more of a shakier shape than we've seen him in a while. But literally from the moment he got off the plane and went to the draw, he looked absolutely like bone weary, exhausted. And he kept commenting to the press like, you know, he doesn't even know what time zone he's been he's in. He's been in five continents, like back and forth in like four weeks, like his schedule has just been grueling and he's like truly feeling the uncle vibes of just like he hasn't done this in years. It's been a hot second since he's had to do that, you know, run from the Grand Prix events to the final to nationals. And obviously he's like quite a bit older than he was when the last time he did it. So I'm not sure if he was like expecting it to take that kind of a toll that it did. Yeah, I, I'm convinced he's if he does next season, if he does the Grand Prix series next season or competes next season, I'm convinced there's no way in hell he's going to let them assign him the last Grand Prix. I think he's just going to be like, fuck that. <laughs> it's not, I'm I'm not doing that again. That that did not work out well. But despite that, like his short program was great. It was. He made layout changes and they really seemed to work out well for him. He had a week to re-choreograph the new layout and transitions and stuff into it, which he did all himself. And honestly, moving the combo back to the second jumping pass worked out really well for him. Like, that was the best quad toe, triple toe we've seen from him all season. Yeah, and it's it's really weird to see him give up those, like, points for switching the combo to the triple axel so he doesn't get the second half bonus. But honestly, considering the score he got here, which, if it was in an actual international competition, would have been the new world record, I mean, can't really complain about that. No. No. So, yeah, and I'm curious to see how he's going to continue to play with layouts because he's going to both four continents and worlds this year, and he strongly, strongly hinted that he's going to probably mix up both the short program and the free because he said the short program layout like it wasn't really the complete version of it so hopefully hopefully it will continue whatever changes he makes will continue to work out for him though because that's kind of been haunting him and then the free oh my god was (laughs) (laughs) to be fair i re-watched this free and it wasn't as bad i think we it was so jarring when i watched it live and like same saw him like because i watched it again and i was like well you know what the first like 90 seconds apart from the step out on the quad loop aren't really 
actually like are really actually pretty solid. It's just we're not used to see like once he had he doubled the lutz and had that insane, like, nearly vertical, complete madman save. Yeah, his, like, upper body was, like, parallel to his landing leg. It looked almost like he was doing a windmill. Honestly, it gave me traumatic flashbacks to when he nearly brained himself, like, on the quad loop in Let's Go Crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Don't need to relive that. And then oh, he just, like, I'm actually surprised he only fell on the um the last jumping pass because he really was saving so many jumps they were very very close <laughs> he really fought to stay on his feet the um his kiss and cry at the end when he was just sitting there with Brian and Gislin and goes from like just giggling helplessly at the jump replay to so literally just covering his eyes by the time it gets to the last like jumping pass and just being like, nope, we, d- we don't need to see this. No one needs to relive this. It's fine. Especially I loved, I loved when they were showing the, the double Lutz and he was saying like pointing at himself, like with the, his, you know, body like right next to his landing leg and him going, oh, it's a difficult exit. <laughs> just like, yes, this should count as a difficult exit. This this is the innovation the ISU tried to instill with their new changes. Like, I'm glad Yuzu gets it. That's the one thing that, like, he obviously had a really rough outing here, but I'm glad that he can, you know, sit in the kiss and cry and find the humor, I guess, in it. Like, he's not taking it all to heart in the way that it's like personally affecting his mood. I think he was honestly just happy to survive. Like, when he was like, slapping his legs at the end it was just like i had to check that they were still there it's just like you <laughs> like should we be worried about your sensory like nerves <laughs> or something that you're just like i don't even know if these are attached still but yeah i'm glad like he seemed a little emotional in post interviews but honestly like he's so tired basically let him sleep for like a week and then he can start up training for four continents and experiment with his ridiculous layouts yeah i think that like on the topic of like his scoring here i think like the free skate score was fair I, that's probably what I would have given him in like w- w- considering what he put out here. It's just like like we said in comparison to the scores that we saw from Shoma, the calling especially cuz like Yuzu got called 3 times, Shoma didn't get any calls. The gap in PCS and just the overall margin between first and second was a little bit too high in my opinion. Yeah, no, I w- I would agree. I think basically my eternal gripe especially this season and some of last season is Yuzu is basically getting scored about how I would score him maybe a little lower on the GOE in some comps but not so much this one. But because the scoring is not being nearly as strict like the tech calls and stuff and the GOE is not being nearly as strict to his competitors, it just feels really frustrating seeing his results because like yeah he's scored relatively fairly in my opinion it's just not everyone is scored relatively fairly so it comes out more unbalanced than one would wish but yeah I mean he's got a lot of time to recover yeah he's got like a whole month before four continents so he's got time to rest up get back into the normal swing of training, hopefully not be too jet-lagged when he gets to Four Continents because it's in Seoul this year. I'll just be glad if he makes it to Four Continents this year. That's like the bar for me. Yeah, honestly, we were like, I know we're like, oh, you know, he looks like really tired and like it's kind of concerning that he was so shaky um, because his schedule seemed really grueling. And But like, honestly... He's still uninjured, and we've still seen him at more competitions already than we did, like, the last two seasons. Like, if he goes goes to four continents in world, that would be the same amount of competitions as he did in two seasons in one. Yeah. So, (laughs) as long as he gets through it. We're just happy to see him. And basically, my favorite theme ever from this competition is the fact that we got juniors as the bronze medalists on both singles disciplines. So, we had Yuma... With who just came back and like blew everyone out of the water here. It's funny because like we at the Junior Grand Prix final we had surprise uh, champion Shun Sato and now here at JNAT we have surprise bronze medalist Yuma. I know. I love it. I love it. And like, oh my god, he landed his triple axles <laughs> like in, in the, the free, free in the yeah. free. Oh my god, the one in the sh- like the one in the short program where he just did a waltz jump and I think oh the commentator god. was even just like their voice kind of broke and I was like, yes. It's a move. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's formed some kind of like mental block after the Junior Grand Prix final because he messed up the axle in the short 
there as well. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if it's like a mental block or just maybe like a transition choreography sort of like he has issues getting it's that would probably be my guess because I don't think it's been quite long enough to be quite a mental block, but maybe look into like your transitions or how your setup is done for it and make sure that's not such an issue because he's getting to go to four continents so we would like Yay! to see a clean shot yes I'm so happy i'm so happy for him i really i really want him to obviously like he's gone to the junior grand prix final now he's meddled at senior nationals and going to four continents i hope he takes the tomoki hiwatashi approach of doing things because that the same thing kind of happened last season with tomoki where he meddled at US Nats, got to went to four continents, did reasonably well there, and then won Junior Worlds. So I'm hoping the same thing happens with Yuma when Yuma goes to four continents, does reasonably well, wins Junior Worlds. That would be like the best thing that could possibly happen to me, honestly. Oh uh, yeah, I love Yuma so much. His skating skills are so nice. Oh, especially with all of the uh the new Fuji TV ice stats that you get, where you get to see his ice coverage and speed in those maps that they show. You can just see how fast he is and how how much like distance he covers and it's just it's so good to see him like just go Num! across the ring from one side to the other with like basically like he can do like two crossovers and get to the other side of the ring in a, f- a few seconds it's insane i know it's so beautiful like i feel like we just don't see enough like junior men who just have that kind of control over their blade and just oh it's so refreshing um I'm not terribly sold on his pro especially his free skate it just feels very sort of elevator music but he really sells it like he's so charming that I end up not minding even if I don't really care for the music I'm really happy that he didn't go for the quad loop or quad flip like he said he was going to yeah I was worried yeah I'm glad that he played it safe and just went for the stuff that he knew he could land well because that was really what you know made the difference at the end of the day the fact that he skated a pretty much clean free and landed everything so lovely it was just it really you know launched him up onto the podium and I'm just I'm so happy and excited for him he's got it together so well and he's just his progress has been both him and Shun have so much more together so much more leveled up than they were last year on the Junior Grand Prix. Yeah, let's talk about Shun. That short program, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> when he came out, he was, like, what? The, one of the absolute first skaters, and he just stayed in first for so long. It was the kind of surprise twist that I love to see, him staying in first for so long, and then overall becoming in third in the short. This is the kind of stuff I like, guys. Yes, yes. <laughs> and the fact that, like, when we were watching the when we were watching the broadcast the fact that like during all the resurfacings and stuff uh fuji always plays like replays from like before like here is shun's short program three separate times and i'm like i don't i'm not arguing about this i don't mind watching this program three whole times it's fine we can just keep seeing this on loop forever (laughs) (laughs) but yeah no it was it was really great and like i think i was like Barely awake when both he and Yuma skated. I was just like, what? Why are they quadding in the short? <laughs> I was so confused because I've been watching their junior skate so much. And I was just like, why? Is, is this allowed? What is going Same. on? <laughs> I was just looking at it going like, wait, was that was that a quad? Can, can you even put that in here? What's going right, on? Right, I was just like, hang on, spit take. That's not what's supposed to be in the... I was like, oh, wait, it is senior Nats. Like, I it's guess they're, allo- they're allowed to wild and show off, I guess. I was so confused. It's like, am I just hallucinating? Was that a quad? What's going on? But like, the free was a little bit more rougher than I think he would have liked it to be. Like, But I think that he did a really, really good job keeping it all together after that first fall on the quad lutz because yeah he just he managed to really save the program basically he's like the second half of the program was really really strong and i'm glad that he managed to keep it together i'm so happy because like he fell on it the opening jump and i was just like oh oh dear but then he pulled it together really well and just continued to deliver and didn't let go of the performance so no, that was fantastic to see, especially since, like, he didn't fall apart and just, like, give up and keep, keep like, derailing. But no, he was like, nope, nope, gonna, gonna actually throw out my best. This is fine. <laughs> and he actually... 
actually, and you got to be in the uh, the last group of the free two and go to like the practices and warm ups with Yuzu, which he said was like his goal, and it just warmed my heart so much. So wholesome. Oh. I love two kids from Sendai. These are the sort of like narratives and continuation of legacies that are just so lovely, and you really just only get to see that much at Nat, so it was really fantastic. Yeah. I think that his, like, PCS in the free was quite surprising to me. I wasn't expecting it to be as low as it was, considering it was, like, a six-point drop from what he got at Junior Grand Prix Final. And, like, I know that, like, Japanese nationals can be a little bit conservative where they're marking at times. So, like, I wasn't completely shocked. But, like, the gap between his PCS and Yuma's PCS when they're both juniors... I mean, I know Shun had errors... But it was pretty substantial, so... I wouldn't have made it nearly that stark or drastic. Like, there definitely, I think, is a bit of a gap in some parts of the PCS, especially Yuma skating skills and whatnot. But, like, honestly, not to that degree. And Shun didn't skate quite as clean as Yuma, but he skated almost clean. I would have put them at, like, the same level of PCS from most categories, except skating skills. For performance and composition... They would probably be at the same. Yeah, they're pretty much comparable. Yeah, that w- that was a little unfortunate. Um, but hopefully if he gets a few more assignments, they'll stop being quite as harsh to him. At least they weren't super harsh to him on the international level so far. So Yeah. Speaking of other fabulous kids who had great skates, can we talk about Kazuki and the fact that he completely threw down in the free? Like, we were all just screaming in like shock (laughs) which no offense just like he hasn't skated that well in like two years i was over the moon for him yeah the last time i saw him skate a free that good was worlds 2018 probably it's just oh boy i literally screamed when he landed the sal because i've just been so used to him either popping it or falling on it but he landed it here and i was just like yes this is all i needed i know and then he kept going on and just like he kept landing his jumps i was just like oh my god he kind of had a couple issues in the second half of the program but apart from that it was just like no perfect (laughs) it was really good and he was just you can tell like okay i do not like moulin rouge um i am so tired of moulin rouge i am practically a moulin rouge anti at this point but you can tell that he gets really into that program it really enjoys like getting to do all the like over the top dramatic theatrics that yeah misha has choreographed into for him and it's just, it's it's fun, and it's great to see him finally have a good skate, and it's got to be so, so good for his confidence. I'm sad that he's not going to be going to any championships this year, though. I'm going to miss him in the second half of the season. Same, same. Like, I, admittedly, he just kind of buried himself with his short. Like, that was such a great free, but the short just kind of buried him, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, we will miss him. Hopefully, he'll go to, like, a senior B or something. I hope so, because otherwise I'm just going to miss him. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to wait until, like, next season to see him again <laughs> and finally we have kg kg oh uh, kg is like if there's nothing else kg is so consistent it's like getting that world spot out of like pure like seasoned energy and spite he has like perfected that game especially since he didn't have like quite the best short and then like his free was just really good like he just comes out and is like no, you're not taking this from me. Like, I am going to make my case and get there no matter what. I appreciate his grit and his work ethic in that respect. Yes. I also, he had, he changed the shirt for the short program into like a full length, like long sleeve shirt. I'm in love. I'm sorry. That was the best (laughs) costuming decision of the entire comp. Like, take something that's kind of terrible and make it utterly heinous and Oh, that is like the siren song to my soul. (laughs) I prefer the original, but like, I'm not completely mad at this one. Like, they're both not really my cup of tea, so. There's so much more bad fabric to photograph. I'm literally salty he didn't have it at Skate Canada. Like, it's a piece of art. And the fact that the sleeves are kind of poofy. It's so good, Evie. <laughs> Literally, I think I liked, I think that was actually when we saw practice photos of that shot was probably be one of the most excited moments I had all nationals. Trust you to be to get really excited about a really ugly shirt. <laughs> Listen, I have a brand. I was groomed in <laughs> Stockholm by years of Japanese entertainment. I will embrace all the terrible costumes and give them all the love. <laughs> 
All right, shall we go on to the ladies? Oh my god, yes. Talk about emotional whiplash. Talk about emotional whiplash. So our podium here at ladies, in gold we have Rika Kihira, in silver we have Wakaba Higuchi, and in bronze we have Tomoe Kawabata. And for the assignments for the season, uh, Rika, Wakaba, and Kaori are going to Four Continents. Uh, Rika, Wakaba, and Satoru are going to Worlds. And then for Junior Worlds, Tomoe and Mana are going. So, oh boy, this ladies' event, though. It was a lot to process. <laughs> yeah, I need, like, a break from ladies' events for, like, the next three months. I'm not even going to go to Worlds at ladies. I'm just going to still be, like, recovering and detoxing. This whole ladies' event at Nats was kind of, like, the culmination of what happened to the Japanese ladies on the Grand Prix with inconsistencies. Like, the whole event was extremely nerve-wracking to watch because a lot of them weren't, like, in their top form, and it was really... Some of the skates that we saw were quite heartbreaking but then on the other opposite end of the scale we had some truly amazing skates that I don't think a lot of us were expecting or results we were expecting to happen so it was like there were such jubilant moments but I I don't know the it did feel like kind of a sad reflection like last year's Japanese Nats was so incredible like we had the top four who all scored over 220 total and just completely threw down and this was like oh we had so many happy comebacks by people who had like struggled a lot like Tomo and Wakaba and then you had just completely saddening and heartbreaking performances like Kaori and Satoko yeah oh it was it was a time um but also and also like I mean part of the reason why we probably didn't have such explosive scores this year was the um the tech panel and judging panel like I want to hire them for everything they're my favorite thing um because they are so strict I can't actually remember like it's been a while since I've seen such a strict <laughs> panel. <laughs> like literally, I, you go for like the protocols, and basically, no one did not have an under rotation or edge call, if not multiple. So yeah, that was great in terms of like you can always count on Japanese nationals to give extremely intense feedback. Um, this even more so than usual. On the same, ha- on the other hand, it was kind of a bit of a wild ride. Um, seeing basically just like you know calorie would skate and literally everything was under review just watching this competition it really want like makes me want to like the next ladies competition we have for me to like strap like a heart rate monitor on and just see like the changes in heart rate throughout the competition because i'm sure it would be a wild freaking roller coaster of a scale <laughs> let's talk about rika who's won her first senior national title seriously winner of surviving most grueling schedule award with flying colors she came out and destroyed this competition and like she was so tired she's injured she said she was super nervous and couldn't even sleep and she put out like the best performance of her three that she's done i'm not surprised that she was feeling nervous i mean the pressure must have been immense going in considering the fact that all of the titles she won last year and then you have the fact that she was the only japanese lady to make the final this year right and she was coming off not like an ideal set of skates or placement at the final so she probably really was feeling the the pressure to really still prove her like she's clearly the top Japanese lady at the moment but still like the media narrative around her and all the expectations are so overwhelming that the fact that she just went out and she has so much grit like if there's anything else I will respect about her it's that she has so much grit to just go out and lay down like that especially given how nervy she used to be when she was a junior and like considering the lead that she had from the short I'm really glad she didn't push herself and go for the quad sal and instead focused on putting out like a, a clean performance in the fray because I think that was really at the end of the day I didn't want her to push the like her injuries and risk further aggravating them so I'm glad that she was able to put out this like the skate that she had in the fray and still you know come out on top and the score that she got was really great too it was like 155 yeah I know it was fantastic yeah she didn't she didn't need to bother to push the um quad style I am I admittedly I am really worried about her schedule and her injury because she's been dealing with this injury all season and I think she still has like ice show she's going to in like early January she has they gave her four continents she has worlds and she wants to train the quad style for worlds I don't I just don't know when she's actually 
actually going to ever have the chance to recover. It it honestly concerns me quite a bit. I really wish, like, I'm, you know, obviously she definitely earned all the assignments she got, but I really wish they'd given, like, the Four Continents spot to Timoe and let her rest. I really think that, like, especially with the ladies' field the way it is, it's going to be best for her if she takes as much time as possible to heal and train and just get into the best shape she can be and get ready for Worlds. Yeah. Because if she's in her top form at Worlds, she can easily vie for a podium finish. But if she continues to push herself and kind of run on fumes and hope that her injury doesn't get too aggravated by competing a lot or skating a lot in like mid-season ice shows, like it's definitely kind of pushing the envelope as to how much she can actually accomplish. So I really hope that she re recognizes this and just takes some time to breathe, to rest up a little bit. I, I hope so. I'm not too optimistic because, like, her team doesn't seem particularly, like, the fact that she's been scheduled in an ice show, though, and the fact that she went to Autumn Classic when she was, you know, very noticeably injured and, like, had admitted it does not particularly give me confidence that her team... Or that she is very, like, good at prioritizing her health in any degree. But, um, yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Like, I don't want to have a case where she, you know, gets to world, crawls through it, and then, like, spends all off-season horribly injured and unable to train or something because she's aggravated at injury so much. So, good vibes. Um, Hopefully she will do well. We wish her all the best. So, Evie... <laughs> I feel like I'm actually a little concerned that I might have jinxed, like, some other people. Because I kept yelling that literally all I want from this Nationals is Wakaba to make the podium after, like, how hard her last two seasons have been. Well, you got it! I did! It's just literally, like, Wakaba and Tomoe podiumed, but at what cost? I know, I know, like, honestly, though, like, this, I think she needed this so badly, and she skated so well. Like, the moment she showed up in practice and people were like, yeah, she's looking great in practice. And she was, admittedly, she stressed me out so much by constantly doing triple axles in practice and then never doing them in her free or her short. But, like, we were just constantly like, oh, my God, every time she went for any sort of axle. And I was like, oh, it's a double. Okay, okay, we can, like, relax. Yeah, I, I, I'm on the same boat with Wakaba's triple axle that I am with Rika's quad sal. I'm glad that she didn't do it here and instead focused on putting out clean performances because that really made the day, like, it really made the competition in general it's just it's so good to see her come back after the struggles she's had and put out two really nice skates and I'm sure it must have been like a big confidence booster for her as well yeah the fact that she said she had her confidence back was honestly I feel like I was so sad that she missed the Grand Prix final this year, but I feel like it might have really been a blessing in disguise because she was still recovering from an injury. Um, she really had time just to focus on training and getting the feet under her. The fact that, okay, as someone who's seen Wakaba live quite a bit recently um, in the past two seasons, the fact that like her triple triples look this good, like that triple lutz, triple toe literally the most massive divine thing I have ever seen I want to marry and elope with it <laughs> like the hype it was literally I was like oh yeah it's a casual 59 centimeters no big deal um, <laughs> like and like okay Evie I have spent like I have seen Wakaba about three times in the last year and a half and every single time has just been staring in horror as she like doesn't have a triple triple or like can barely eke out a triple triple so this is great we love it this is progress we like progress oh it's so good to see yeah i do think bird set free is just the best short program for ladies of the season it's beautiful it's stunning it suits her to t Poeta, on the other hand, though, um, needs to work. <laughs> it's a. Uh, I kind of have the same feelings about her Poeta that I do about Hayen's Fire Dance, where like the first half is kind of pretty much focused on the jumps, but the, like the second half completely like makes up for that because the step sequences in both of those programs are just so good. So good. Like honestly, I was actually almost confused when I watched Poeta um here because I saw it at skate america and i was so blown away by it i think it literally just because the step sequence at the end is so so good and she delivers so hard on it that like i completely forget whatever happened before was just kind of a bit more of a disengaged jump montage because that step sequence like waka always completely sells a step sequence like almost no one else but 
This one is so explosive and she delivers it with such joy and abandon that it's just, it completely goes off. But I do hope that now that she's gotten for continents and worlds, I do hope that since she's no longer injured, maybe she can meet with um, Massimo Sally and maybe flesh it out a bit more because it does seem pretty obvious that she got it choreographed when she was probably quite injured um, and that they want, they were just trying to get it so in a shape she could get clean and maybe she can flesh out the first half a little bit more. But anyway, really excited to see her back on track. She's has like the most heart and is so, so inspiring to watch. So I'm so glad we're going to see her back at championships this year. Woo-hoo. Okay, shall we talk about our favorite junior ever? Yes, <laughs> Tom Moe. Oh my God, back to back clean programs from her this is all I've ever wanted oh this was I didn't even dare like you know how you have those like pipe dreams but you don't even dare to hope like Tamoe was one of those in terms of yep <laughs> I mean she has had issues she had issues on the JGP with really skating clean programs and stuff and this she just back to back clean programs no big deal just kind of really outselling at really probably the most important comp for her to outsell at. So Yeah, we we have to stand. We have to stand. She's honestly, Tomo is pr- obviously my favorite Japanese junior lady, like by a mile. There's basically no competition. She's she has my heart completely. And she's just now grown into being like one of my favorite Japanese ladies overall. And just to see her put together these programs when I've seen her struggle so much, like not just in the junior Grand Prix this season, but like most of last season with inconsistency. Like, the last thing I expected going into this event was her to get on the podium, considering the, like, competitiveness of the Japanese ladies field. And while it was definitely, like, it it was definitely on the back of some pretty, like, awful skates and really heart-wrenching skates to watch from others, I'm really glad that she has this, and I hope that it puts a little bit more of confidence in her as going into Junior Worlds. Yes, no, I completely agree. Also, just casual shout-out to her for having the best music choice of the season <laughs> i'm sorry but like you made you seem is one of my favorite pieces of music and i have literally been begging and trying to do like witchcraft and black magic to get anyone that i care about <laughs> to skate to it for the better part of a decade and the fact that she just came out was like yeah absolutely i'll, I'll skate to you made you steam it's like i will f- love you forever this is all it takes i am a simple simple woman i am a simple woman give me Yumeji's theme and I will be happy you give me Yumeji's theme turn it into a war horse literally like my dream is for Yuzu to skate to it and turn it into a war horse so we can just have it for eternity but you know what I have faith in Tomoe she can do it too <laughs> her Lutz is so big and beautiful and the edge and the height and the flow and like all throughout the Junior Grand Prix and like last season the f- it's usually like so big that she can't control the landing and usually like runs out of room to- at the end-, end of the rink to get the combo. It's very Karen Chen. <laughs> I'm so glad that she managed to combo like both of them in both programs. It's just every time I see it, I'm just like chef's kiss, like best Lutz in the ladies field. Keep landing it properly. Um, I am a little bit sad that they didn't give her four continents, all things considered. Like I can see why they wanted to give Kari a chance and hope maybe if Rika decides to withdraw to focus on her health or something she can still get to go but um really looking forward to seeing her at Junior Worlds because this was fantastic <laughs> shall we talk about the third member of the world's team Satoka well do we have to I mean that free she's going to Worlds this is good I didn't think going into this event I would have had to be like worried about Satoko not going to Worlds but this is the world we live in now I guess yeah it was kind of a bit heartbreaking to watch because Satoko usually like even if she struggles she usually manages to pull through and like really put a stellar performance at Nat so yeah, it was just it, her jumps just and she said that like it wasn't even mistakes she was making in practices like she just completely like you could see she was trying to especially in the free she was trying to capture sort of, you know, still not completely give on the performance but you could see her just being like, 
oh my god like once she doubled that first loop and then the program just her jumps just disintegrated after that basically (laughs) the whole three kind of fell apart but i am really glad that she still managed to capture like some of the performance aspects that she was like showing off in like earlier assignments like that that didn't fall to the wayside just because she was having issues with her jumps so i'm glad about that but yeah that whole three was just really really difficult to watch yeah it was just it was just kind of gut-wrenching like i actually obviously um kari didn't um hold up as well as we had hoped um and very unfortunately but like after she performed i was like there's no way she's making the world's team ultimately i do think they made the right call in giving her um worlds the world spot just because she performed the best on the GPS apart from Rika. She was the only Japanese lady to medal. She has shown herself to be pretty strong and consistent. Tomoe, I think they really want to give her a good shot at Junior Worlds and having her do back to back like Junior and Senior Worlds is just too much really. Yeah, and I'm glad that they did I'm I'm honestly glad they didn't give Sasuke four continents because I think having that extra month in her new training base and just getting everything kind of sorted will probably be the best for her right now. She kind of needs a little bit more stability and a time to get settled and really like drill into what they're currently working on with her. Yes. I think I think it'll be best. Like she's the fact that she's reworking her jump technique at the same time as she's changing coaches is just it, it's a lot she's got a lot on her plate right now yeah she's got a lot um I do think it was interesting that she clearly has just pretty much severed ties with Hamada it seems like it, originally she was in an interview um I think after Cup of China when both Lee and Hamada were there and she's like oh yeah Lee is my you know my coach for international events and Hamada will handle the national events and we didn't see Hamada anywhere near her so that's interesting, um, but I'm glad she seems to be just really committing to her new coaching situation. So fingers crossed it works out and she can get some of her jump issues sorted out prior to Worlds. Let's talk about another kind of extremely disheartening performance. Uh, this is like literally probably the most heartbreaking part of all the net, like of this entire competition. Kaori Sakamoto, our defending national champion, having a really rough outing here. Oh boy. I mean, for, okay, let's talk about the let's talk about the positives. How the hell did she save that combo in the short? Oh my god. Like I saw her axis in there. I was like, it's doomed, it's doomed, it's doomed. And then she literally comboed and tagged on a triple toe i I was expecting her when i saw her land i was like she's gonna double out like or just not combo but she just reached back and pulled everything in and got a triple toe out of that and it was just like what kind of witchcraft oh my god oh yeah that that was actually probably one of the most start like oh my god i'm awake now moments of the end because i was i was struggling I, i woke up every day at like 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. and was up to like 6 or 7 a.m. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, nope, I'm, I'm awake. There's Kauri pulled off that. I, I can't be asleep anymore. <laughs> I bet you wish you were asleep for the free though. Yeah, that, I, I mean, I barely, I accidentally barely woke up until the um the end of the third group. And honestly, I probably should have just slept through that. <laughs> yeah, it was extremely hard to watch. She obviously, like you could tell in the warm up and right before her performances or even just completely through the free skate that she was really nervous and she wasn't as engaged with the performance of the free as much as we've seen her like obviously there was a huge amount of pressure for her going in you know she was the def- she's a defending national champion and she did have kind of a rocky grand prix series as well so there was and you know everything is on the line at japanese nationals you know especially going into championship events and the field is so deep that the amount of pressure that she had to you know be as clean as possible in order to get either on or close to the podium to get those assignments. I'm really upset that she took it so hard. Yeah, it seemed really debilitating. Like, it was just gutting, absolutely gutting to watch her because she just, she looked so off from the start and just basically every single jump was under-rotated or had some issue and... (sighs) I just, she's talked, she talked in interviews about how um, her rank mate, Mai Mihara, who's been, had to take basically the entire season off because of some 
pretty severe health issues she's had to deal with and how that just completely was really a huge blow to her motivation because they're extremely close friends as well as rivals. She's literally like sunshine and she's she's just such a compelling skater and she has such a special quality to her skate. It's so sincere, it's so genuine and I just, I really hope that she can find that spark and just really bring it back for four continents and just skate much more freely and much more confidently. I am really glad that they gave her four continents. I was so worried. So, so glad. Yeah, I was, that's literally all I was, I was just like, please, please give her this chance. Um, so I really hope that she can regroup and just completely attack it because she doesn't really have anything to lose at this point in the season. And her programs are so good. She has, like, possibly the best set of programs out of the Japanese ladies. Like, I prefer a Wakaba short, but, like, in terms of a set, hers are probably some of the best, if not the best. So it's I'm really excited we get to see them again. I'm really hoping we get to see her perform the free, like, really well at Four Continents, because we haven't really seen it 100% clean yet, so... I really want to see it because I really like the Matrix and I think it really suits her. So yes, please rest up, Kari. Take some time to, you know, find out what's going on and just relax a little bit. Maybe go hang out with Mai, you know, have some good friend time and come back to Four Continents stronger. Can we just quickly talk about a few of my favorite darlings, particularly Marin? Of course. Yes, let's talk about Marin. <gasps> okay, like, admittedly, I know you're like, oh, eighth place at Nats, not exactly the <laughs> best possible, but I'm ecstatic. Like, I really just wanted her to hit top 10. Honestly, after last year, I, I will take anything after last year. If you didn't watch last year, she was 15th and completely fell apart, and it was really heartbreaking because... Um, if you're not super familiar with Marin skating, she was considered to be basically a potential shining star. It's, it's been rough. So really glad to see her looking better. Her jumps are still kind of dicey um, and it wasn't a terribly clean set of programs. She still has some issues doubling her jumps and just kind of having shaky issues. But what I've really noticed is kind of one of the defining, like really encouraging aspects is a difference from last year is she doesn't seem to get as frantic and drowned if she makes a mistake and just kind of completely lose focus like she's really been especially with her free she's really been performing throughout the program and just not giving up on it which is so good to see because she is one of the best performers <laughs> yeah I think with the free like last season's free skate was quite more dramatic and classical I, I think that the like performance side of things with La La Land it's a lot a bit more easy for her to emote to it because it's you know more happy and it's so effervescent like it's just her it's very much her as opposed to last season where it was more like sad soft music but this season it's just like yes this is like exciting and sweet and it much it suits her personality more and so I think that even if the jumps don't go the way she plans she can still you know focus on the fact that she can emote to it pretty easily which is really cool actually I think because for, with a lot of skaters you kind of especially with some juniors and not as experienced skaters you kind of see them sometimes giving them like super heavy dramatic music so if they're like screw up their jumps in a disaster they can just get angry and like glare down and stuff yeah. so I think I think it's actually really refreshing that Marin can kind of be like not complete disaster but you know she can have quite a few issues and she's still just like projecting nothing but sunshine and charm and just like you feel it's like so cathartic apart from being very stressed about like you know hopefully she does okay and stuff but it's just it's really cathartic watching her and I think that's really charming that you know she can still project that sense despite issues also a quick shout out to rin mataya who oh this was her retirement her final her final nationals and she plays seventh which is really impressive oh and she just she had two beautiful um back-to-back -back skates and i would honestly really recommend especially her free just going and watching it even me, who does not like exogenesis programs, liked this program. I was like, I can't believe I'm tearing up at exogen. Like, I hate this song. Um, <laughs> no offense, I'm just like completely bored to death. And I'm like, here I am, like tearing up. But there's just, 
she was so sublime and sincere and just the like it was technically a pretty demanding program and like she just skated it so softly and sincerely and beautifully it's the kind of send-off that i think every athlete kind of wants at their end of, at the end of their career i want this for everyone yes absolutely <laughs> i want to talk about my daughter yuhana yukoi <laughs> I'm going to like explode. She got fifth place. I'm so happy for her. She is just, she is adorable. I love her so much. The fact that she's just like one, her cheeks are so squishy. I love that her coach, like before they send her off, they squish her cheeks and then they like, tap her on the forehead and send her off. It's the cutest little ritual. And the fact that like after, I think was it, it was after the free where she was just nodding to herself like yep okay yep i did good that's fine like yes yes i'll take that that was solid oh and like uh i just i want the world for her she is so fantastic um and it was she's been doing like so so well because early in this season and stuff she she tends to struggle a bit and have issues with skating kind of a clean short program and she'll often falter then and you know come back with a pretty solid three but like NHK here, she has done amazingly. <laughs> she has. Can we actually, let's talk, can we talk about how amazing that short program is for her? Yes. It's so unique. It's just, honestly, it's one of my favorite ladies programs of the year. The music choice is unique. It's the soundtrack to a Japanese drama, I believe. Uh, and you obviously don't see a lot of interesting choices like that from a lot of skaters. But the fact that she like, stays so committed to the performance throughout the entire thing, she doesn't drop it for a second, even like going into the jumps, her emoting, like the way she like playfully like looks at the camera and the audience and the judges, it keeps you so engaged throughout the whole thing. So engaged. It's so distinctive. Because I remember like obviously on Dreams and Vice when we got all the program announcements and I saw that and I was just like, wait, what? What is she doing? What? And then we watched <laughs> and I was just like, this, this is the perfect choice for her uh we love like interesting unique programs that uh have such personality because she she has so much personality and getting her to convey that uh, it's perfect please give her like a uh, just like a senior b assignment sometime in the second half of the season because i need to see this short program again at this point i need it <laughs> All right, shall we move on to the other disciplines quickly? <laughs> the other disciplines, just lumping them all together. Listen, all right, okay, so we have pairs. Our singular pairs team. Yes, yes, the most concise event in existence, but we love them dearly. Our gold medalists and only medalists, Riku Viura and Biri Chikihara, uh, yes, and obviously they've been uh, assigned to both four continents and worlds because they are the only currently competing pairs team. And then for ice dance, we have in gold Misato Komatsubara and Tim Coletto. In silver, we have Rikako Fukase and uh, Eichu Cho. Uh, and in bronze, we have Kiria Hideyama and Kenta Ishibashi. And Team Coco are being sent to Four Continents and Worlds as well. And then uh, Utashin are being sent to Junior Worlds. Yay! So, yes, we have the pairs of the ice dance, the other disciplines that the Japanese Federation you know, just kind of lumped together. I hate that this is how the Japanese Federation treats them mostly because, you know, like both you and me, all we did was text each other during Japanese nats and be like, where's our ice dance coverage? Where's our pairs coverage? I always know that they're no not going to broadcast pairs in ice dance life. So like they have the one combined broadcast, which this year was at 2 a.m. JST. Which did not even do those short programs, only was the free. Just the freeze. That was it. So unfortunately, our our commentary for this segment will only be about the freeze because that's all we've been able to watch. So let's talk about Riku and Ryuchi because we love them. We love like she is such a star. Oh my god! Like they just for a new team, the degree to which they perform the hell out of everything, I cannot believe. Yeah, I just uh, they scream potential, and I absolutely love it. I just want them to stay injury free over the next couple months because that's definitely a concern. 
over like over the last couple seasons. Like they weren't quite as clean here as they were at NHK, but they were still like pretty solid, especially like in the free. They had a couple close calls and then Riku doubled her Sal, her side by side Sal. But apart from that, like their throw trouble lots is so nice. <laughs> it's so like massive and pretty. Like they, he like chucks her into the ambush like oh my god like that that is like not the level I would have expected it's so nice yeah some of their elements are a little bit rough like their twist the catch that they get on it is kind of scary at some points the twist scares me a lot but I think that's just gonna take them like quite a bit of time honestly like this is what I get with them when watching their elements is some of them just just clearly need just more time to work on it <laughs> and they haven't been together long so they're definitely going to have the time over like the next couple months to really work on solidifying like how they work together as a partnership but like honestly if they go as clean as they did at nhk and if they have a little bit more like reputation backing them up I think that they could probably vie for a Four Continents podium in the future. Like, maybe not this year, but maybe next year. Probably, yeah. Maybe next year. Um, I think it depends a lot on what Canadian and American teams go, because that can be so hit and miss. You know what? I'm for that they can win Four Continents during the Olympic season. <laughs> <laughs> Let them have I it. I thought this, or at least get on the podium. Like we had, we had, we had Rom Kim on the podium at the Olympic Four Continents last year. Let's have Riku Yu on the podium next time, please. I would like this. Please, please. Let's talk about some dance now. We'll go on to Team Coco. Oh, I'm so happy, like, to see them here. Like, obviously, they withdrew from NHK, which I think, all things considered, was probably the right call, considering Misato's injuries in the off-season. Yes, I'm glad they just, like, they did Cup of China and then they evaluated. I'm glad they decided not to push and force for NHK, because I know, I'm sure, there was a lot of pressure and they really wanted to skate because it's a home Grand Prix, but, like... Please always prioritize your health. That is all we want, especially since we love them so much. Especially when it's concussions. Yes. Those are serious folks. Yes. I think the free is still very much a work in progress. And I'm not going to blame them for that, considering everything that's happened. No, no, we're just happy they're there. Yeah, exactly. And they did, like, all things considered, they did really well. Like, they almost broke 100 in the free. That's awesome. No, it, w it was great. And, like, it's very much a work in progress, but I can see, like... Even from when we saw that Cup of China and they probably haven't had a lot of time to work on it. But it's it already looks better. Like they already look more comfortable with it and more into it. Um, just in general, it feels a, a more like cohesive as a program in general than we when we saw it on their first outing. So I'm really excited to see what it'll look like in the second half of the season because I do really enjoy this program. Like they seem to really like it. I like some of the elements in it too. I really like the character steps. I think that like the fact that he gets so close up to the judges and just like emote right in their faces I love it yes I like screamed in delight when I saw them just go like I love it when skaters just like throw themselves straight into the judge's personal space and are like look at me <laughs> look how fabulous I am I'm excited to see it at four continents and see how much another month of training will help it so yes go Coco stay healthy guys can't wait to see you later <laughs> All right, and we have some other cute ice dance teams. Basically, just, you know what? Please just go watch the um, the recap uploads of the Japanese ice dance because there's only, like, four teams. It's It'll take very little of your time. They're, they're all really darling. Rikaka Fukasi and Echucho had a Milan free dance, which is the only thing that matters in my opinion. <laughs> all the free dancers can go home. <laughs> I was really surprised by them. Like, they're really, really promising like we're just watching them they've got a lot of talent that just needs to be like polished like obviously some of their like elements are a little bit shaky especially their twizzles right now but they train in Gabois like if there's one thing that Gabois knows how to teach it's twizzles so like I kind of have a little bit of faith in that I have hope they yeah they were pro like I opened up the stream I was like oh my god they're skating to Milan but I was like well I don't really know like I haven't really watched them much before and Oh, they were, I, w I was really excited by them. They, you know, they could work on the speed and twizzle some and stuff and a few of their other things. But, you know, their lifts I was pretty happy with. There was a lot of, they were a lot smoother than I expected in a lot of ways. And just, oh, they had a lot of personality, which I always love to see, so. And then we also have Kyria and Kenta, who are just so fun to watch. I, they are my new favorite hams. And, like, I <laughs> love them. They're so spunky. Spunky little hams. <laughs> yeah, I love 
love that Kenta also like he has so much personality too because I was watching I was like he's performing right along with her and just like completely jamming out they did a Maroon 5 um free dance medley and it was really fun and they have like such fabulously terrible costumes that you know I fell in love of course you did why am I not surprised (laughs) Just watching all of these teams, I'm just like, I really want JSF to give them, like, some more, like, lower-level international assignments. Just let them out on the circuit more, because they are really, like, there's so much talent here. I want it to be shown off. And speaking of letting it be shown off, Fuji. Fuji, we have a bone to pick. Okay, let's rant about accessibility. Big ITL energy. Okay. All right, here we go. No. Seriously, though, like, I felt like the first day I was like, oh, okay, okay, whatever, you know, I, it's kind of unfortunate that we can't see the short program live or whatever. But like, the more I watch the broadcasts all night, every night, for four days in a row, and <laughs> the fact that like, okay, one, I have seen more ads in these four last four days than I have seen in an entire year. Yep, mood. <laughs> yep, yep. But I think what really drove me bad is, okay, so Paz, they have one team. <laughs> Airing the short will take you, even if you don't, like, even if you want to be super brief and, you know, you decide to be an asshole and not actually show, like, the kiss and cry or anything. You know, airing the short or will take you, like, three minutes, four minutes. And you have those, po- like, points in time where they were showing replays from earlier on in the segment. Why not dedicate that time to showing off a pair or a dance team? Oh, it was like how you said, we saw Shun, like, we saw a short program, like, three times. We saw endless ads. Um, there were so many times where, like, for Daisuke, we saw both his programs on the Daisy Skate them, like, two or three times because they kept airing replays. I remember watching because they take so long with their ice resurfacing that, like, you know, they're like, oh, the event starts at five, you know. And we didn't actually get to see the group three or four or whatever till 5.30 because they spent 30 minutes resurfacing the ice showing full practice run-throughs of, like, three of the singles people, showing more ads. They could have shown the entire ice dance competition as a recap in the time. And, they, you know, they spent so much time being like, here is a montage of Dai, Yuzu, and Shoma to Duel of Fates for three minutes looking dramatic. It's like, I could I just, like, actually just see your, like, ice dance champions? Thanks, that would be great. And it's not like they don't have the infrastructure in place in order to, like, not even just set up, like, a live stream online. Like, they have so many behind-the-scenes streams at Japanese Nationals. Like, there's one from the in the warm-up area. There's a dedicated warm-up stream during the six-minute warm-ups. There's a kiss-and-cry camera stream. Like, even if you kind of make the argument that broadcasting pairs and dance, like, isn't financially viable because there's not much of an audience to like actually watch it at least let people see it you've already set up multiple streams surely it wouldn't be that hard to just offer like a free youtube stream of those events or even the fact that like the earlier groups of the singles events aren't broadcast on fuji tv proper they're on one of the like pay tv channels bs fuji so like the already the audience being able to watch that is smaller is it gonna hurt that much to spend like 10 or 15 minutes showing the pairs and dance teams like right before it's not and they don't even have like a resurfacing in between pairs and dance and then the first group of singles on all the days so like surely it wouldn't be that hard i mean obviously it is that hard because they didn't do it but (laughs) also i think what really frustrates me is it just comes off as so disrespectful and disheartening because like these are still their national champions and their competitors in a field and like the fact that for instance like even just on the competitor's sake and their family side the fact that they never even aired the short programs or rhythm dances like at all like they don't even have that for reference for some of these teams that might be like I won nationals I don't even I can't even see my short program because they didn't (laughs) bother to turn the cameras on that's great like that is just really kind of heartbreaking honestly especially since like, the shooting themselves in the foot, it would be so easy just to give it a tiny bit more coverage, you know, if they're not going to, you know, make much money off the broadcasting rights or draw that much attention, even just uploading it to the YouTube. It's only going to really help them by eventually, if they can actually get attention for the event, increasing interest in it. So, 
God. <laughs> yeah. Especially with, like, the context in both of the fields right now for pairs and dance. Like, pairs, you have Riku and Yuichi, who are a brand new team comprised of skaters that have competed with different partners in the past. And they're skating at their, like, first nationals together. Wouldn't it be, like, good to see them, like, show and show them off to, like, a wider national audience so they can be, like, exposed to more of the general public and, you know, maybe get some fans and, like, show off the fact that, look, we have a really strong pairs team now. You should support them, kind of. Thing. If you're a casual like skating fan who isn't someone who gets ticket to the events or is just like flipping through channels, you probably don't even realize that like Japan even has other disciplines that aren't singles because they do such a good job at hiding them. It's just ridiculous like kids are never even going to see hey ice dance that's an option and then yeah in ice dance like you have coco who are coming off miss Aldo's concussions in the off season and they're only at their third competition of the current season and like wouldn't it be really nice to like give them a live show so they can have like live support from the like off-site audience who can still like support them even though they're not here or showing support to the brand new ice dance teams there come on show them off this dance field deserves and like in comparison like we have russian nationals which is getting a full like worldwide free stream commentated by ted barton meanwhile japanese nationals is one of the most like annoying competitions to watch each year because of like the lack of accessibility to streams like you have to either watch it in extremely low quality on a bootlegged stream or you have to watch something that's behind a paywall anyway japan stays extremely disappointing in all things pairs and dance not by the performances of the people at nats they were fantastic but just in general and how their media and federation treats that yeah fuji tv number one you know nemesis of ice dance fans i guess Please, next year, be nice to us and perhaps stream the events live because I know that we and a lot of other people would appreciate that immensely. <laughs> Seriously, the one reason why I might die, actually survive your ice dance training so that they will be forced to, you know, do like, su- suddenly they'll have to like, actually, you know what, they'll actually have to feature the other teams in ice dance because they need to make the dramatic montages to like hype their competition. So like, they'll even have to like show footage of the other team. So it'll be great. Okay, cool. Now die. You need to go into pairs as well so we can get the same treatment. Yep. <laughs> Just be our sacrificial goat to the, you know, popularization of pairs and ice dance. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so our shout out of the week for this week is to Ice Stats. Like, we obviously just spent the whole couple, last couple minutes ragging on Fuji for not broadcasting stuff, but they do do some things right. They did do something right. Uh, they obviously last season they introduced Ice Scope, which is the tools that they use to measure jumps and show it on the screen so you can see like how high the jumps are, like the speed going in and out, you know, stuff like that. Really great for stats nerds. And this year they took it a, a step further and now at the end of most skaters performances they show uh, a map of the ice surface and then they draw lines as to how like fast they were traveling and just you can see like their overall ice coverage in the programs it's so good and they mark the spins and jumps on it too so you can really see like the full context of how their speed and coverage interacts with every element of the program like oh it's just, I want to spend, like, tuck myself away for a week and analyze all of them. And <laughs> if the ice you could acquire it for worlds, that would be fantastic because then we can just all die in stats bliss and not actually get grumpy about anything over off season because we're still too busy studying all the beautiful graphs <laughs> that they've gifted us. I think it would be a really happy, really, a really, really good tool for ice dance. Because you would be able to see, like, ice coverage and speed in, like, such more of a tangible way. And that's the thing, like, especially with ice dance and also the other disciplines, it's really hard to gauge when you're watching on a stream how fast skaters are. So having that kind of, like, map and with specifically telling you, like, oh, these skaters were going, like, 30 kilometers an hour at this point. Like, that's a tangible statistic that you can relate to. And so you get more of a sense of, like, oh, this skater's really fast and covers, like, ice really quickly versus this skater doesn't do it as effectively. Like, I think it's a really good step in the right direction for trying to get that feeling of being at a competition while still watching at home. <laughs> yeah, no, I I absolutely agree. It would be really, really invaluable in sort of understanding, especially since I think to the general public, ice dance is a little, 
you know, if you're not quite an enthusiastic, it is kind of hard to understand what are the differentiating characteristics sometimes between the levels of teams and stuff and what that like really sets apart some of the top teams um, apart from just like preferences and stuff aesthetically. And if they had that as a resource to kind of evaluate and be like, okay, this team clearly has so much better ice coverage that doesn't translate as well and speed and stuff across the ice and some other stats, like I think that would be actually pretty illuminating and really educational. So Please make it happen. <laughs> ISU, please license it like you did iScope. We are asking for this in exchange for the absolute train wreck that your awards event is going to be. Like, you owe it to us <laughs> to deliver on this one thing. <laughs> you owe us this. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. We hope to see you again for our next episode. Thanks to our transcribing and quality control team. Thank you, Evie, for your future efforts at <laughs> editing this. Thanks, future Evie, for editing. Thanks for Gab for ever being patient and saving us with our awesome graphic design. If you want to get in touch with us, you can contact us via our website, inthelowpodcast.com, or on our Twitter or Instagram. And you can find our episodes on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever podcasts are sold, you can probably find us there. And if we're not there, then tell us and we'll be on there. <laughs> if you enjoy the show and want to help support us, please consider making a donation to us on our coffee page. Or you can buy our new merch if you want to like somehow deck out your life in ITL merch, which we'll try not to judge you for. Um, <laughs> 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 you know, we're, we're, we're also there, so we're all a tragic mess. But that is available on our um, Redbubble which we will have a link in the show notes. And we would really like to just give a massive thank you to everyone who has supported us throughout this entire year. And whether that was just through feedback or through, you know, more financial support, we really, really appreciate them. Thank you so much. We have done so much crazy stuff this year and we have so many crazy things planned for next year. So get excited. Woohoo! You can find all of the links to our social media pages, our coffee and our red bubble on the website. If you're listening on iTunes, please consider leaving a rating and review if you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. This has been Bex and Evie. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year's. <laughs> Happy New Year's. All of the holidays. We'll see you next year. Bye. <laughs>